And the Oscar goes to... Welcome to the show. I am Chris Gore, host of the Film Threat Podcast, joined as always by my cohort in crime, co-host, lead film critic for Film Threat, Anthony Ray Bench. How's it going, everybody? Go, well, how is it going? Are you pumped for the Oscars, Anthony? Like, I don't know. I could care less. What do you mean you could care This is our Oscar show. You can't say you don't care when we're well, doing Well, I'm excited the about the Oscar, Oscar show. show. I'm just not excited about the Oscars in general. So you're excited about the show, yeah. but you're not excited about the actual awards. Yeah, I'm one of those people that likes to just read the results. I don't like to watch the show. You know what? I think the show is better than the actual awards themselves. That's what I think. I think that, like, I think that actually the fun of the Oscars is complaining about the Oscars. Wouldn't hmm. you say? Uh, sure. <laughs> That's half, that's half the fun of it, is doing that. But let me ask you a question. And I, also, this is a question for our listeners. Who won Best Picture last year? Oh, God. Um, you know what? Let me ask you an easier question. Who won Best Picture Oscar two years ago? Birdman. Was right? it? Two what? years ago? Was it? I don't know. Was it? Was it? <laughs> I have no idea. Here's my point. My point is this. People don't remember who won. Yeah. They remember that Jack Palance did push-ups. They remember <laughs> the gaffes. They remember the dresses. They remember uh, uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker walking down the red carpet in those gorgeous dresses. That but was they, hilarious. But they don't remember the winners. They really don't. Like I, I feel like I I feel like yes, it's an honor to be nominated. If you're nominated, you've already won. You've got the gift bag that's worth like what fifty grand. You've gotten to go to all these parties. You've got you get the stamp on the the box cover. Exactly. You've got a little uptick in your career. You can you can put the little the, yeah exactly. You could put the uh, uh, gold naked man on on the the box art for the Blu-ray or poster or whatnot. You can you can run a commercial campaign, but really. Uh, you know, winning an Oscar doesn't, it, it doesn't mean that you're going to have like long continued career success. Yeah. Right. So, so this is our Oscars. The, it's the film threat Oscar special. And Anthony and I are going to go through all of our picks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to keep score. And then the night of the Oscars, we're going to record right after the Oscars is over. We're going to record a special edition of the film threat podcast, which we will post on Oscar night. So listen for I'm that. looking forward to that. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, we're going to watch the Oscars together. Uh, I'll live tweet from the Film Threat account, you know, and then I'll, uh, from at Film Threat on Twitter, and then we will post, we'll do a Oscars post show. Probably won't be as long as a, a regular episode of our podcast, which is running, a, you know, just under an hour at this stage. But, but it'll be, uh, you know, it'll be an opportunity to kind of see uh, how we did. Yeah, yeah. And see how we did on our tiebreaker questions. So our tiebreaker question for the Oscars is going to be, how many times is Trump mentioned during the, during the Oscars show? During the show, not the pre-show, not... Okay, so Anthony, how many times do you think Trump is mentioned? Uh, I'm going to go with 42 times. You, it is not 40. You can't... Come on, that's not realistic. It's like, what do you want to lose? It's not going to be mentioned 42 times. Come on, let's make this okay. a real tiebreaker. All right. Um, uh, like directly or directly kind of, the word Trump, okay. the, not the, indirectly, but Trump, Trump will be mentioned during the Oscars. Um, I'll go with eight times, eight times. I'm going to say two times, two times, two times. Okay. Okay. So I'm saying two times. You're saying eight times, write that yep. down on our little, on our little sheet here. So, uh, so, so, uh, let's actually get going. You know, we're going to start with the, we're going to start actually at the bottom, which the first category is writing original screenplay. Um, if, if for example, Anthony, you start to, one of us starts to talk too long, um, I'm going to play, I'm going to play us off. I'm going to play us off. Just, just, just like you would get played off at the Oscars. If one of us begins to speak too long, we're going to get, we're going to get played off. All right. So, all right. Is that okay with just you? Just like understand? the real thing. Okay. So ju just like the show, 
We're gonna so so let's let's actually get to it. Let's get to our first nominee. Okay, but it sounds okay. Good. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So let's get our the first category is writing original screenplay. And usually this is like this is this might actually be kind of the order that they do them on the show, right? Starting from bottom to to top. The to uh, best picture. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Let's okay, go so that. Let's, let's go through the nominees. Writing original screenplay. And before I actually we we actually name, you know, what our picks are. Mm-hmm. Um I think cuz I think there's a science to Oscar picks. It's never about the best anything. Okay. It's never about the best actor or the best picture. It's always about politically who is the one someone would like to see win the award most. So that's the game we're playing. We're not going No, with, we're with, no I uh, no, we're not playing that game. I'm saying my theory about Oscar winners is it's not about the best anything. It's about who do you want to see get an award. Okay. I, so and and I will say this, just like the people who have actually voted on the Oscars, exactly like those people, right? Yeah. We also haven't seen all the movies. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you know, someone uh, who is in the Academy who basically handed the form off to their uh, maid. We're, we're not doing that. We're actually just copying to the fact that I, I have seen, I've seen 90% of these, to be honest. I really seen, I probably seen more this year than, than um, some of the previous years, but same here, um, hands down, you know, uh, but, but you know, we're just, I'm going with my gut on a lot of these. So let's okay. start with writing original screenplay and the nominees are, Hell or High Water, La La Land, The Lobster, Manchester by the Sea, 20th Century Woman. My pick for writing uh, original screenplay is going to be Manchester by the Sea. That's what I went with, too. Wait, so we're already tied up. Yes, we are already tied up. Now, what what, what was your reasoning behind Manchester by the Sea? It was just a fantastic movie. Um, I, I just loved pretty much everything about it. The yeah. story was fantastic. You're introduced to this character that's just so awkward and unlikable and the reveal of why he is the way he was. It came off as realistic and not a cop-out. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that, that that movie was made by the screenplay. I mean, with all due respect to Hell or High Water, which I thought was fantastic. And La La Land, which and is actually- And I didn't see Hell or High Water. Well, well, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, I hear good things though. It's, it is fantastic. I mean, there's a great, there's a great review on the film on filmthreat.com by Bradley Gibson. You should, you should check out, but, um, but La La Land I thought was great, but obviously La La Land's all about the music. La La Land's probably going to sweep. Oh yeah. I yeah. was going to say, if we, if we split the difference on this, I would say La La Land, but you know, I really want to see Manchester by the sea win myself. So, uh, Anthony, please introduce the next category. Sure. Um, the next category is animated short film. No, it's actually not. It's writing adapted screenplay. Oh, my We're bad. Going the sheet okay. that direction. All right, that works. <laughs> writing adapted screenplay. Okay, so what the nominees are? Arrival, Fences, Hidden Figures, Lion, and Moonlight. Uh, so what's your pick? My pick is Arrival. Oh, wow. Interesting choice. Okay. I think... Uh, that was my favorite movie of the last year. Hmm. Okay. I, I have a huge soft spot for kind of uh, sci-fi thrillers, and I just love the way that that movie played out. I like them too, but you're wrong. Oh. Arrival is not going to win in this category, unfortunately, because the Academy hates genre movies. That's true. The Academy does not like science fiction, which I, uh, of course, disagree with the with the, the Academy. And the Academy has been, in my opinion, the white people drama movie awards. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, I mean, Oscars so white, Oscars so drama, right? Like the Oscars are all about drama. Anything that steers, you know, s- slightly askew from drama is not really acknowledged, you know, because Arrival uh, did did well at the box office, right? Which I think is which I think is also against it. But um, you know, you look at the other categories; they're going to go with something that that tugs at your heartstrings. I actually think that my pick in writing adapted screenplay is Lion. Okay. I think Lion is gonna is gonna win that award. Wait a sec, what am I saying? Lion, it's against Moonlight. Sorry, I meant Moonlight. I want to win. <laughs> so while while like my heart says would go with Lion, uh, which I think is fantastic. I think that I think that Moonlight is gonna get it for adapted screenplay. I think it, I think it's gonna be a Moonlight La La Land. It's gonna be a Moonlight La La Land evening. Pr- I actually much. watched Moonlight last night. Oh, you did. Yeah. And I, I liked. What it. are your thoughts? I liked it a lot. 
Okay, um, more than liked it a lot. What is, what is it that you thought? I'm was... just deathly afraid of you playing the music on me. That's... Well, I'm not going to play the music all on right, you. All right. I'm just trying. I'm just, you know, in case I need to play the music <laughs> on you, I'm going to be ready with it, but I'm not I'm not going to play the music on you. I really like that you got this kind of uh, like portrait of the three stages of this kid's life. Uh, his name is Chiron, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you get to see him as a boy. You get to see him as kind of an adolescent. You get to see him as a man and kind of what shapes him into the last part and who he is. And like, I, I just really like that aspect of the movie. No, I, um, I, I agree with you. I think that the, the, the sort of realistic approach that mm-hmm. they took with it, the fact that, you know, just seeing what this character, you know, had to struggle with in terms of family life was, yeah. was just, you know, just horrific and, and, uh, not to mention just struggling with sexuality. Yeah. Right? So, so, um, it, it grapples with a lot of issues and, um, I, I, I think Moonlight's going to get it for adapted screenplay. Okay. So our next category, visual effects and the nominees. Well, first of all, can I give you my theory about visual effects category? Yes, please. The visual effects category in the Oscars is the award for the best genre movie. Mm. Okay. So because because genre movies get almost no acknowledgement at the Oscars, the visual effects is given to not the movie with the best visual effects. If you go through the history of films that have won for best visual effects, it's not the movie with the best visual effects. It's the movie that used visual effects in the best way to tell a genre to to tell the story of a genre movie, right? To, yeah. to actually have a successful genre film. So when you look at visual effects, think of that as that's the sort of what the Oscars um, is awarding. It's awarding their, their uh, uh, you know, best genre movie, whether it be horror, fantasy, um, science fiction, or I'm going, okay, okay, all right. I'm just, okay, I'm fine, fine. I'm just, I'm playing, okay. Let me get, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, but so let's go through the nominees for best visual effects. Sure. Deep Water Horizon, Doctor Strange, The Jungle Book, Kubo and the Two Strings, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Now here's my reasoning on my pick. It's going to be the movie that is the best of that those movies. Not the movie with the best special effects. It's the best. And the, it really comes down to two for me. It's Kubo and the Two Strings and Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. Now, I love Laika. I really, I, I'm pulling for Laika. I want Laika to win an animated feature. Yeah. But uh, I, I, think that, I think that Doctor Strange is going to get some love here. I think that the Marvel movies have just proven to be so successful that I think um, in spite of what you think about the quality of the special effects in all of these films, I think Rogue One is definitely not going to win. I think Rogue One is a lock to not win in this category yeah, for a number of reasons. Bad CG Tarkin yeah. should disqualify it from yeah. this award. Paramount category. is the fact that the effects were not, yeah. some of the effects were not great, right? Mm-hmm. Like, or were overused. I thought the, the Grand Moff Tarkin digital was overused. It wasn't bad. They just used it. It was on screen too long. Yeah. So my pick for this is Dr. Strange. So, and that's my pick too. Why are, we cannot be at the same picks for every category. We did this random. <laughs> okay. No, you filled yours out. I'm filling mine out on the fly. Yeah. So, and I'm going with my gut, which means I will not be winning the Oscar betting pool. <laughs> Whenever I go with my gut, I And I'm going win. with my heart. I didn't know we were doing a competition. All right. All right. Well, no, we're definitely doing a competition. Okay, well. Someone is going to get crap. a major reward, whoever has the, the most, whoever has the most correct answers. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> all right. Why don't, why don't I we... was going with what I wanted to see you win. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Anthony, your turn on uh, the next category. Okay, uh, the next category is sound mixing. Uh Uh, The nominees are Arrival, Hacksaw Ridge, La La Land, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. Okay, what's your pick? My pick is Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and here's why. I think they did a fantastic job with the sound mixing on this one. I think they used a lot of sound effects from the original trilogy and some of them they had to recreate. And I think that's kind of phenomenal. And I just love the way they remixed the original trilogy. And I think this is very, um, I guess true to the, the ways that they did the original. Now, 
first of all, I respect your opinion, even though you're going to lose in this one for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You're definitely going to lose in this. I, I, I'll, I'll, here, here's, here's sound mixing is also one of those categories when it comes to technical awards. That's where genre movies, science fiction, fantasy, horror, it tends to sweep in the technical categories, unless there's something that um, it really stands out. You're going to think I'm crazy. I'm picking Hacksaw Ridge. I um, didn't see it, so. Okay, I saw it, and I saw it on, on an incredible on an on an incredible screen mm-hmm. at the Academy, oddly enough. And the this, I mean, it's to me, Hacksaw Ridge is the best war film um, since Saving Private Ryan. Wow. I mean, it really is. If you have not seen it, you definitely need to check it out. I mean, put your put put your whatever thoughts you have about, about Mel Gibson aside. You know, um, they, they, you got to put that aside. And it really is a phenomenal war film. Um, it's a story that needed to be told. Um, and, and uh, you know, about a guy who was in World War One who would not fire a weapon. You know, he wanted to he wanted to basically help his fellow soldiers, but he would not fire a weapon to kill someone else. Mm-hmm. So it's it, it's a true story. So he's a medic in uh, it, during World War One. So it's uh, uh, it's uh, fantastic. So yeah, yeah. I, Is it I, World War One or World War Two? I wonder if I got my World Wars mixed up. It felt like World War One. I'm gonna go with World War One. This is how much I paid attention. <laughs> I will say this, it's incredibly gory. Yeah. Like, uh, much bloodier and gorier than Saving Private Ryan. Well, I think war movies should be gory. Yeah, I think they should. I think yeah. they should dissuade you from wanting to go to war. Yeah, absolutely. All right, now we're looking at our, our next category, mm-hmm. which is sound editing. These are the ca- Sound editing and sound mixing, with all due respect, I feel like it's those categories, maybe they need to combine them or something. I don't know. Like, it's, I mean, it's... It's a whole, you know, and maybe put them on the technical the technical awards, but for some reason, these sound awards have, have survived and stayed on the national broadcast. Uh, and the, the nominees are for sound editing. It's, it's, it's a very similar list. Arrival, Deepwater Horizon, Hacksaw Ridge, La La Land, and Sully. On sound editing, I'm going to split my ticket. I'm not going to go with Hacksaw Ridge. I'm going to go with La La Land. I know it's crazy, but I think that La La Land is going to do very well. What's your pick for sound editing? Arrival. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you're wrong again. Yeah. But, you know, we're going to find out on awards night. This was all about what I wanted to see win, <laughs> <laughs> not what I thought was going to win. That's okay. All right. You go with your gut or do you want to win your Oscar pool? I don't know. Like, it's that weird. It's, it's, it's weird every year. So, all right. Our next category. Anthony, up to you. The next category is live action short film, and the nominees are. I, I, <laughs> I knew, I knew when you got to that. Oh, it's a yeah. French. It's in Maui, in Fresnesa. It's something. Uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't. My but, French is not all that good. If it was Spanish, I could definitely read it. What Chris said, um, La Femme. Animus et, Interiors. Yeah, that. La Femme uh, et le TGV. Sure. Uh, this one I can I can do. It's Silent Nights. That was easy. Uh, Sing and Time Code. All right. What's your pick? I have seen none of these. Okay. And just like most Academy voting members, I also have seen none. I'm going to go with something that just sort of jumps out at me, and I'm going to pick Time Code. Which one are you picking? I was going to pick it, too, because it sounded like Time Cop. But uh, I'm going to go with Sing, then. Okay, cool. Just so we have a little bit of a, uh, you know, look how, in, look how informed we are in this. All right, let's blaze through, get, get through some of these categories. Animated sure. short film. And the nominees are Blind Vesha, Borrowed Time, Pear Cider and Cigarettes, Pearl, and Piper. So for animated short film, I'm picking Pear Cider and Cigarettes because it sounds so interesting. What about, what about you? I'm going with Piper because it's right. the only one I've seen. Oh, you saw it. Well, tell me about Piper. Uh, Piper was the movie or the little short film that showed before uh, Moana. Oh, that was great. Yeah. Oh, I man. think either Moana or uh, or Finding Dory. It was the one with the bird. Oh, it's Finding Dory. Okay. Yeah. Was Moana Dory. was the one with the island. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, okay. Good choice. Good choice. All right. Moving on. Production design. Anthony, up to you. All right, we have Arrival, Fantastic Beasts, and Where to Find Them, 
Hail Caesar, La La Land, or Passengers? What's your pick? Uh, I'm going to go with Passengers. Oh, wow. It's a movie I didn't care that much for, but the production design was amazing. It was futuristic. The effects were fantastic. Um, I really liked the look of the film. I just wish it had more substance. Again, production design being relative. Because, look, if you're making a film in Hollywood and you have a decent budget, your production design, you're, you're working with professionals. It's a team. It's going to – it's it's for the most part, I mean, you're, you're comparing apples and oranges, you know, especially when you compare, like, um, a period piece with a present-day science fiction, with um, a future science fiction, with a musical, with – you know, a fantasy like Fantastic Beasts, like none of these are comparable at all. It's going to go with, it's the, the winner is going to be the movie that the Academy likes the most, which is La La Land. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to win in that one. Okay. Mark my words. All right. <laughs> okay. Our, our next category is music, original song, and the nominees are Auditions, The Fools Who Dreamed, La La Land, Can't Stop the Feeling, Trolls, City of Stars, La La Land, The Empty Chair, Jim, The James Foley Story, How Far I'll Go, Moana, and my pick in this category, no competition. This is a lock. If you if you bet on one category, if you bet on one category for one winner, and you turn to a friend, and you say to him just before they announce music original song, and you say City of Stars, you will win whatever you bet. It's City of Stars, La La Land is going to win. This this song is a lock. I agree with you, but again, I'm voting with my heart, and I thought Audition, The Fools Who Dream, was a better song. Ooh, but 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 City of Stars is the one you can kind of hum. I know. I'm, I'm not going to sing it for you right now, because I don't want to... City of Stars. <laughs> If you, but look, if you look, I feel first of all better than Ryan Gosling. Well, thank I you. Say. <laughs> I agree. I did not think he was that good of a singer. It doesn't. I, Emma Stone was fantastic, though. I like it. I like it. This is the musical where it was realistic, yeah. and no one got hung at the end of it, mm. like in that Bjork <laughs> uh, musical. Um, so, uh, in any case, no. I, I feel like City of Stars is a lock. I, I, I really do. I mean, I, there's just no question. I agree wholeheartedly, but I just I think that audition was the better song. All right, what's our next category? Our next category is music, original score, and here are the nominees: Jackie, La La Land, Lion, Moonlight, and Passengers. Okay, I I have a, a, an opinion about this. Okay. I, okay, because I I have all these soundtracks. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I have seen all but one of these films. I did not see Passengers. Jackie, the score for Jackie is incredible. Is it? Oh, uh, it, look, if I'm, if I'm voting with my heart and I'm voting with what, not only my heart and not only with what is the best score, it is Jackie by far, by a mile. Jackie, it's, in, it's, it's dark. It's, it's, it's not typical. Also, Jackie is not a biopic. You know, it's about the it's it's about the repercussions, you know, how Jackie survived in the days after JFK was assassinated. So it's like about the, the week after all the events had transpired and how she just held it together. You know, they show her at the White House taking her bloody clothes off, right? You know, after everything that just happened. They're just going to Dallas for, you know, what they think is this uh this, you know, this wave into the crowds and it's a fanfare and a parade and and uh he's dead it's just it's 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 amazing and that score isn't fantastic but la la land's gonna win so i am picking la la land i'm going against my my you know what i like and i'm going with la la land because la la land's gonna win it's gonna win that what's your pick um i'm going with la la land too um but i want to give a special shout out to moonlight because i love the score on that oh I thought it was fantastic. Okay. I haven't seen Jackie, so I can't vouch for that. Um, and Passengers, I don't remember the score. I just remember the look at the film. It's kind of like you don't remember the score of every Marvel movie you see. Exactly. Why, why is it that like... Except for Avengers. I love the theme for Avengers. Avengers works. And Doctor Strange was kind of getting there. But if you listen to the score for Doctor Strange, it's a few notes off off from the J.J. Abrams Star Trek score. It actually is. Hmm. Seriously. Listen to Doctor Strange. 
listen to the the Star Trek J.J. Uh, Abrams 2009 score, the, the sort of Star Trek theme, very similar themes. I think Thor had a good one, too, the first Thor. But then they completely abandon all the themes in the second one. I feel like this is one of the very few categories where DC actually exceeds yeah. Marvel. Oh, yeah. Is music. And I also think that um, I, I like the way that some of the DC films look because they shoot on film, whereas the uh, Marvel movies are shot digitally. So, um, but, you know, it, it's just sort of to give DC, because the DC films are in such trouble. I mean, especially if, like, Ben Affleck is actually going to leave uh, as playing Batman, I mean, yeah. which is going to be a huge blow. I mean, I think, you know, the DC films have done some things right, but they haven't told compelling stories with compelling characters. And I that's agree. what Marvel has done exceedingly well. We have really gotten off topic. I, we have gotten so far off topic that... Uh, I feel like at some point this, you know, is going to come in and it's going to play me up. All is. right, I get it. I there get it. it. Okay, I get it. I get it. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. Sorry. Let's, um, what's the next category? The next category is makeup and hairstyling. And the nominees are A Man Called Ove, Star Trek Beyond, and Suicide Squad. Okay. Now, I did not see A Man Called Ove. Uh, I did not either. There's there's a great review on filmthreat.com that you should check out. Um, I have seen Star Trek and Suicide Squad. My feeling on this is they're going to throw a bone. It's it's going to be Star Trek. I don't think. I mean, maybe Suicide Squad. Do you think Suicide Squad would win? I don't know. Half the cast didn't have hair. Right. Yeah. So uh, I, I I'm going with Star Trek Beyond, even though I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like the makeup on um, the lead uh, the the lead female alien. Her character, who's now like a member of the crew, like I thought, I thought that was great. Yeah, yeah, she had a really unique design. Yeah, she oh, isn't based on any of like previous no previous established alien aliens. species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your pick? Uh, I picked Star Trek Beyond as well. Easy Just, category. Yeah. All right, let's let's move it along real quick. Foreign language film, Land of Mine, A Man Called Ove, The Salesman. Ta- Pff, wait, I can't read this. Tana. <laughs> and and Tony Erdman. All I've right, seen Anthony, none of what's these. your pick? I, I haven't seen any. I have not also seen any of these. So I'm going to go with Land of Mine. I will go with uh, A Man Called Ove. All right, good. I like that. All right, the next category. Film editing. We have Arrival, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, La La Land, or Moonlight. Huh, wow. Now, this is, again, one of those technical categories. And I really feel the Academy is going to vote for La La Land. I mean, it's, it's going to be another La... It's going to be a La La Land... It won't, I don't know that it'll be a sweep, but La La Land will probably win in the, in the double digits in terms of awards. I agree. Yeah, so I'm picking La La Land. What's yours? I'm going to go with Moonlight. Oh, nice. I just wanted to pick something different. I feel like I picked La La Land a lot. <laughs> so. Well, you're pretty safe if you pick La La Land. Yeah. You're yeah. very safe. So, all right. And the next category is documentary short subject. And I, and I think you've seen one of these. We've seen one Two of them. These. Yeah. Um, documentary short subject, Extremis, 4.1 miles, Joe's Violin, Watani, my homeland, and the White Helmets. These are the nominees. What are you picking, Anthony Ray Bench? I'm picking Joe's Violin. All right. And it's because you've seen it. Yes. The other one I saw was 4.1 Miles, and out of those two, I preferred Joe's Violin. All right. Well, you know what? I'm also going to pick Joe's Violin right. because there's because you did the review that's on the Film Threat website. And it's fantastic, too. I mean, um, it's pretty easy to find. And I definitely highly recommend checking it out. All right. The next category is documentary features. We have Fire at Sea, I Am Not Your Negro, Life Animated, OJ Made in America, and 13th. Okay. Well, um, I have seen two of these films. I'm familiar with the other films. I have to say the film that deserves to win is 13th. Mm-hmm. It's the most socially relevant. It's uh, Ava DuVernay. She's uh, she was up for um, Black Panther. She was going to uh, 
she she was going to direct it and kind of walked away not wanting to do a, a studio film which is uh, uh you know admirable she she wants to do um you know i guess more socially relevant work and 13th is is first of all 13th is available to see on netflix and um it's about basically post uh the civil war um the 13th amendment uh, it's it's about the Thirteenth Amendment and how it basically affected um, uh, blacks in America after slavery, and how um, how oppressed this group of people, how, how oppressed blacks have been in the United States, and it's it's shameful. We should be ashamed and horrified that um, uh, blacks in America are are treated so so horribly. You know, it's. Um, I mean, just just watching it, you just it's it's one of those movies that you need to prepare to watch it because you're really you're really going to be um, um, depressed at the statistics because what, what what the film also looks at it walks you through sort of historically what has occurred since the Civil War, but also statistically speaking, um, what's what's happened to blacks in America, and it's almost as if, it's almost as if slavery continues in in a sense. And uh, a kind of economic slavery. Um, I, I also saw OJ Made in America, which is not just a documentary. I mean, it's like a it's a it's a, like a mini series. It's almost eight hours long. Oh wow! And it's um, it's it's abs- You know, having lived through, I actually lived in the area uh, where Nicole Brown Simpson was murdered at the time. I lived in on on the West Side in Los Angeles, and I remember the helicopters constantly. I mean, I just remember I, I, having lived through it. We all kind of, you know, if you lived around that time and watched the news, it, it dominated everything. And um, that, that, I mean, the film really explains why the verdict ended up being the way it, it did. I actually think that the, the you know, OJ, two things can occur. OJ can be guilty of the crime mm-hmm. and the, the jury gave the correct verdict. And I believe that given the, inf- the information that the jury was given, they gave the correct verdict verdict mm. i also think that oj is probably pretty guilty so um i'm picking uh, okay i'm gonna get i'm gonna get played off <laughs> for sure i'm getting played off but but um my pick is 13th okay um i'm gonna go with life animated just because it's the only one i've heard of all right okay you're go- you're gonna lose on that one i will probably say. you're probably gonna lose all right um next okay now we're getting to some of the so we're gonna now we're getting to some of the bigger categories here. Go for it. This category is directing, and the nominees are Arrival, Hacksaw Ridge, La La Land, Manchester by the Sea, and Moonlight. And the winner is La La. I'm gonna say La La Land. Yeah, that's why I went with too. Yeah, I, swear, I mean, look, I think Moonlight's got a shot. I think it's gonna be a Moonlight La La Land night. Mm-hmm. I think that Moonlight, La La Land are going to win more than half the awards combined, but you got to go with La La Land. Yeah, I I, I think that. Um, I mean, I just saw actually you can look up this video on YouTube that the director actually shot the rehearsal. You know, the dance number that opens the film where it's up on the freeway, and it's actually the one eight. I think it's the one eighteen freeway that connects the two ten and the four hundred five. If yeah. you know L.A., that makes sense to you. Um, but they they shut that down to shoot this sequence and but they rehearsed it just in a parking lot with the cars parked kind of where they are where where they are in the you know in the actual movie you'll see the way they're parked so um and he just shot an iPhone video just for himself of like following the action and it's it's amazing it, and and they sort of put in a window like you can see like the the real sequence and then you can see his iPhone video and it's pretty much the same because oh, they use because cool. they use the so yeah just look it up on 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 YouTube but um wow like just the timing with everything like that sequence you go oh it's digital it wasn't yeah it wasn't digital it was just uh just incredibly well rehearsed. And of course it was lip sync because they recorded the song, you know, they recorded the song before. So they were mouthing to the song, but wow, what a, what a, just, uh, uh, just a physical feat and a technical achievement. Oh, yeah. So, um, I have to, I have to give it up for, for directing on that. And, uh, what, what's your pick? Uh, La La Land. Also, also. also La La Land. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Next category, costume design. And the nominees are, Allied, 
Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Florence Foster Jenkins, Jackie, and La La Land. Now, I'm going to say that I think that actually uh, Jackie should probably should probably win in this category, but it's going to be another win for La La Land. What, what's your pick? That's on? what I marked down. Oh, uh, really? So we're we're I mean we're going to be pretty much in line. This is good. Is this going to be one of the easier years? I wonder. Uh. I don't know. I'm not good at this. I'm just picking with my heart. I, you know what? I, I am fa- I, I, I basically for the last like several years, five, six years, I have come in second mm. in every Oscar bet. I go to an Oscar party. I fill out the form. I always end up being second. It sucks, but what can I say? So, all right, let's get to our next category. Yes, sir. The next category is cinematography and the nominees are arrival, La La Land, Lion, Moonlight, and Silence. What's your pick? Uh, just a breakaway from the mon- the monotony that is La La Land every single time I'm going to go with Arrival. I'm going to lose. I don't <laughs> care. I think the cinematography on that movie was beautiful. And I want to win. Mm-hmm. So I am going to go with La La Land. All right. Because I want to win. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. So yeah, I mean, this is one of those where, I mean, look, cinemat- cinematography, like what, what they did with La La Land was actually very impressive. Oh, it absolutely was. And I, I think with Moonlight as well, just the, the, the way that that film looked, I mean, it's, a, it, it's, this is one of those tough categories with, I think that like when it comes to science fiction and cinematography, I don't think that the Academy is kind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's the assumption that they just did it digital. Um, but but I think I think La La Land uh, has it has it locked up for this. Yeah, um, that's fair. Cool. All right, let's get to our uh, animated feature, and the nominees are Kubo and the Two Strings, Moana, My Life as a Zucchini, The Red Turtle, and Zootopia. Now, I, here's what I'll say on this: I think Zootopia, because of its social relevance, it's really about racism. Yeah. It, it you know has a shot, but I really, really, really want to see Kubo and the Two Strings win. I mean that Leica has been blowing us away with box trolls and you know uh, uh, Coraline, just everything at Coraline, everything that like Leica has done and Kubo and the Two Strings. I mean it's one of those like and I they're the, the kind Blu-ray. of movies that are worth seeing in three D. They're worth seeing. Yeah, you actually they actually merit seeing in three D. Mm-hmm. And in addition, they're, they're just, they're different. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like Pixar, I feel like Sausage Party came out this year, right? The mm-hmm. uh, Seth Rogen movie, which is like a parody of a Pixar movie because Pixar movies are all about things have feelings, right? Yeah. It's robots have feelings. And then, you know, feelings have feelings and toys have feelings. Feelings And it's like after a while, it's ridiculous. And it's pretty much Pixar movies. You know, you could make, you could do a parody of, you know, a Pixar movie now, which they did sausage party. I feel like when they do a parody of a genre film, it's because that genre has run out of ideas. Yeah. Right. Like just too much. So, so, um, sausage party is kind of sort of like a little red flag to Pixar. Like, Hey, there's a sameness about your films. Right. And Kubo isn't that at all by any means. It's really about it. And I actually don't think Kubo is for kids. Kubo and the two strings. I really believe it's, it's, it's more for adults. I mean, it's really about the acceptance of death. Yeah. And it's really much darker themes. I think that like any single digit age kid is going to be frightened by Kubo um, just because it's, it's such, it, it deals with um, more mature themes. So, and I'm pulling for it. What's your pick? Kubo was also my pick. Yeah. Well, that's, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make fun of you for that one. We're on the same page. So, all right, Anthony, next category. The next category is actress in a supporting role. And the nominees are Viola Davis for Fences, Naomi Harris for Moonlight, Nicole Kidman in Lion, Octavia Spencer in Hidden Figures, and Michelle Williams in Manchester by the Sea. And I went with Michelle Williams for Manchester by the Sea. She's only like really in two or three scenes, but that one scene she has with Casey Affleck, and you know know the scene that I'm talking about. Yeah. All the awards, all the Oscars to that scene. I'm sorry. Other films, you just can't measure up. I, I, I agree with you, 
but the Academy is going to vote for Octavia Spencer in Hidden Figures um, for a couple reasons. One, I mean, all of these performances, it's hard, you know, to, to compare. Yeah. Right. They it's, were all fantastic. Yeah, they're, they're, they're fantastic, right? And I think Nicole Kidman might be, I don't want to say she was the weakest, but we've, we've seen her do great work before and, 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 and whatnot. And, um, she's not really a big part of Lion's story. She's mm. not, I don't believe that her character is particularly, uh, pivotal. Yeah. So, uh, well, it, it, this sounds horrible to say, we're going to get in a big debate. People are going to be tweeting at me. What are you saying that Nicole Kidman? And uh, no. Okay. It's going to be Octavia Spencer because hidden figures, um, which I think is is the weakest of the movies in this category. It's a movie where I'd rather have seen the documentary than the dramatization, which is a little too fanciful. But yeah. that story is so incredible of these women who who were total professionals in the space program that were really integral to why we have a space program. They were called computers. Yeah. And just bringing this fact to light um, and, and making it kind of a fun and a, it's, it's a broad appeal movie, right? Don't get me wrong. It's a broad appeal movie that, that makes you aware that like, Hey, it's not just about these guys in the astronaut uniforms, like the right stuff, always constantly celebrating, you know, the quarterback or the guy sitting in the, in the, you know, the, the hero, right? These are the people behind the scenes that those heroes wouldn't have existed without, without um, the, the real people in, in uh, hidden figures. So, so I think they're going to give it to her. And, you know, I'm, I assume I'm going to get played off any second now because I'm, I'm definitely talking along way too much about this. But I, but, but I, I, it's a serious point. Bet on it. Octavia Spencer and Hidden Figures. So, okay. All right. What's our next? <laughs> what's the next category? Actress in a leading role. Okay. Wait, is, am I reading this one? Yes, you're reading this okay, one. Okay, cool. Which, well, I'm pretending they're cue cards and we screwed it up. But, Okay. <laughs> We got to come up with a bet. We got to come up with a bet for whoever gets the most right. I don't know what that's going to be, but we, but we we'll got to post come up it with, on Twitter. No, well, we got to come up with something during the podcast during the podcast. Yeah, right. Yeah, we oh, do. Oh, jeez. Okay, before the end, we have to come up with something. Okay. okay. Actress in a leading role: Isabel Huppert, L, Ruth Nega, Loving, Natalie Portman, Jackie, Emma Stone, La La Land, Meryl Streep, Florence Foster, Jenkins. What's your answer, Anthony? Emma Stone in La La Land. I kind of think you're right. I think she was fantastic. I think she's fantastic. I also think, though, that Meryl Streep has kind of... I mean, look, she's... How many of these? She uses Oscars for doorstops, probably, at her <laughs> place. But, like, but like uh, you know... But the fact that she gave that that kind of, like, dig at Trump at mm. the Golden Globes, yeah. I kind of feel like, you know, whatever you think of that, I think you like the Academy likes her. People yeah. in Hollywood like her for being brave, you know, to 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 say that. I completely disagree with though with her comments about mixed martial arts. Yeah, that was a say, little like, off. That was a little off. Like miss, mixed martial arts. If you're a fan, first of all, mixed martial arts is gay porn with clothes on. It's pretty much. <laughs> and I, as a frequent, like I love to go to watch UFC fights. Like it is like guys that are really amazing. It's not about just pounding people. To, it's really a, a skill, right? The guy, the smarter fighters are the ones that always win, not the ones that are most physically intimidating. So I disagree with Meryl Streep when it comes to UFC and mixed martial arts, but you know, uh, uh I, I feel like the Academy has got a soft spot for her, because of what she said about Trump, I feel like she could be she could win in this category just because what did I say at the beginning of the podcast? It's about who you want to see give a speech. Mm. Right. And after what she said at the Globes, I feel like people are going to want to see her give a speech. But I am also voting for Emma Stone for La La Land. So because uh, I thought she was fantastic. All right. All right. It, it's, it's winding down. Actor in a supporting role. Uh I cannot pronounce this guy's name, but he was, um, um, uh, Mehershala Ali. That. He was in, um, Luke Cage, and he was fantastic in Mehershala it. Ali? In Moonlight. Moonlight. Okay. Jeff Bridges in Hell or High Water. Lucas Hedges in Manchester by the Sea. Dev Patel in Lion. And Michael Shannon in Nocturnal Animals. I'm gonna give this to Dev Patel. Really? For a couple reasons. One, uh, I, I think the Academy uh, really wants to acknowledge brown people. Mm. I feel like this is like, this is uh, the Academy wants to push diversity. I think that these are fine performances. Uh, and I, I think, but I think, I think that Dev's going to win it also because Dev's a hunk. 
It's weird. He went from this gangly, skinny slumdog millionaire in newsroom. He was also gangly, skinny. And suddenly he got, he's like hot, right? So I, I, and, and also I feel like it's the award that that movie, that movie deserves acknowledgement. And I feel like that's a category where it really would, it really would benefit. So, um, that if not, it's going to be, it's going to also be moonlight. Right. I feel like, I feel like cause Michael Shannon, Jeff Bridges, you know, we've, we've seen them do great stuff before. I, I really yeah. think, I really think it's, uh, it's either, it's either going to be Deb Patel or it's going to be, uh, 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 Mahershala Ali in Moonlight. I'm going with Moonlight. Dang it. I think you're going to win. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're going to win in that one. Okay. Uh, we still got to come up with what our bet's going to be. Uh, whoever loses has to review Yoga Hosers. No. <laughs> come on. Some, that's mean. <laughs> that's mean. Uh, something else. We got we to gotta come up with something. We got to do. We got to come up with something. Uh, I don't know. We can find like a disgusting, like chocolate bacon flavored soda or something to make the other one drink it. I don't know. Uh, all right. All right. You have to. Okay. So yeah. So the loser on the, on the next podcast has to bring something. You We each bring something gross to eat and then you have to, to eat? eat, to eat that, eat or drink, 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 yeah, on, let's and you do have drink. to drink that gross thing on, on the podcast. Okay. I, I can handle drinking gross things. Eating. No, I can't. All right, all right. Because that's a fear factor thing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now we're getting to actor in a leading role. And the nominees are Casey Affleck, Manchester by the Sea, Andrew Garfield, Hacksaw Ridge, Ryan Gosling, La La Land, Vigo Mortensen, Captain Fantastic, and Denzel Washington, Fences. Anthony, what's your pick? I went with Casey Affleck. He's kind of a lock, right? I mean, he's kind of yeah. a lock in this category, but 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 I have to say, like, but then La La Land, I don't know. La La Land could be the the, uh, but also Vigo Mortensen in Captain Fantastic, and you see Vigo's Mortensen, so to speak. I mean, he does full frontal nudity in it, and he is it's his dong is just hanging out. I mean, this is it's um this and is I, like the fourth or fifth movie he's done that. Yeah, well, there's a lot of actors like that that just love to mm-hmm. get naked for the camera, yeah. but but um. I, I I actually think it's also going to be Casey Affleck, just because I mean it's just such a heart wrenching role. With all due respect to Ryan Gosling, um, um, I think that if if he did, sang the songs better, he maybe would have. But but yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're so we're both voting for for Casey Affleck. Yeah. Okay. And then so what are you going to bring? I'm gonna f- I'm gonna find something really gross that you have to drink. Uh, I'll find the worst thing I can find at Bevmo. All right, all right. So we're both we're both doing a trip I'll to search, Bevmo. Yeah, I'll search bacon, the trenches. Bacon, onion, soda. Yeah, something There's like something that. something like, like gross. Liver, yeah, liver and onions, like something. All right, all right. This is, okay, that's fun. All right, and now, and now for our, you know what? I feel like, I feel like what we do need with this is we need like a little, we need like a little music because, and now, and now, presenting this year's Oscar for best picture, Anthony Ray Bench. Shh, shh, applause, applause. Anthony, the nominees are Arrival, Fences, Hacksaw Ridge, Hell or High Water, Hidden Figures, La La Land, Lion, Manchester by the Sea, and last but not least, Moonlight. And the Oscar goes to <laughs> the Oscar, and the Oscar goes to. It's La La Land. What are we? Why are we? Why are we even sitting here like, like, arguing? It's going to be La La Land, right? I, mean, I agree. It's, it's going to be no surprise in this. La La Land is going to win Best Picture. I went with my heart though, and I put Manchester by the Sea. I think it deserves it. Manchester, wait a sec. Are you picking Manchester by the I'm Sea? I'm picking Manchester by the Sea. I went with my heart. You went with your heart. Yes, I well, went your with my heart. Heart will be broken. I'm an idiot. Your heart will be broken <laughs> when you actually end up drinking the thing that I'm going to force you to drink. Apparently. on the podcast. Oh gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get ready for that. We should record this one outside. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because if one of us barbs, <laughs> oh. but no, but look, so, so, no, look. I, I, you know, there, there's been like some chatter that La La Land, like because it's been such a lock. Because I know of, I know of other things that have occurred 
where it looked like someone was going to win, mm-hmm. where people voted, and then they didn't win. You know what I'm talking about. You know, it's almost like the more you say... Are you insinuating that shenanigans happen at these <laughs> award not, shows? I'm not saying any shenanigans. All I'm saying is a lot of times when the media says, like, this person's just going to win, whatever, it's no big deal, then it's like a shocker when some when the results of voting go a different way than what was expected. Mm -hmm. And I think that this could be that case, even though everyone's been saying la la land, la la land, la la land. I I, I think that this, there, there could be an upset. Um, I don't think that, I I think if it's an upset, it's not going to be Manchester by the sea. If it's an upset, it's going to be moonlight. I'm going to put an asterisk by it because I'm not picking it, but I'm just saying that it's, it's my, what would be your second choice? If you had to pick a second choice, that's my second choice. Well, honestly, like, like it's I'm saying that's my pick is La La Land. My upset pick is is Moonlight. Honestly, What's your upset? I, I think pick? La La Land's gonna win. But as an What's upset, your upset pick, Manchester by the Sea. So that's your upset. But pick. I picked Manchester by the Sea because that's what I want to win. Because you want to drink bacon onion soda that I get from Bevmo. Apparently, <laughs> apparently that's what I'm into. No, I, I honestly thought like we were picking what we wanted to win, not what we thought was gonna win. Well, I mean. I, the thing is, here's the way I look at it. I'm trying to give some advice through our podcast mm-hmm. with to, to people about how they should vote. Yeah, and whether I get you, that now. Whether I get you that agree now. with you know what you and I are saying yeah. or not, I'm trying to give you some advice, some logic as to how the Academy like votes. I've been watching the Oscars since I was a little kid, mm-hmm. and I've watched a lot of them. So uh, yeah, it's, it's just, I, d- I don't have that perspective. To me, I always watch the Oscars because I just wanted to see scenes from movies. Mm-hmm. I remember actually seeing. I think it might have been 1976. I watched the Oscars because they were showing a scene from Logan's Run. Really? Which I loved that movie. I love that movie too. And I just wanted to see it. Might have been maybe it was 1977. I just no, no, it was 76. I wanted to see footage from movie. It was the only way to see footage from movies. You know, there Mm. wasn't DVD or even home video then, right? So it was like, you know, movies opened in theaters, then they were on television, and that was it. So the reason I watched the Oscars was to see scenes from movies. Yeah. So I've pretty much watched the Oscars since 76. And I remember watching the Oscars, you know, in 78, which was, you know, because Star Wars came out in 1977, 1978 Oscars. is They showed a lot of scenes from Star Wars. Star Wars was a big part of it. It was nominated for Best Picture, did not win. The year that it did not win, Annie Hall won for Best Picture yep. in 1978. But I'm not going to say I'm an Oscars nerd, but I can kind of be an Oscars nerd. But... um but I, I feel like I, we're the purpose of this podcast is really to give insight into uh, if, if you want to you know, have at least a little be a little informed when you go into the Oscars, this will help inform you and maybe give you an edge in the Oscars betting pool. I'm trying to help you win money. Yeah, I'm trying um, to help you win money. That that works with me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, cool. So uh, great. Uh, Anthony, where can we find you on social media? At This Game Cheats on Twitter. And you can find Film Threat on everything Film Threat. You can find me at that, Chris Gore. Uh, on Oscar night, Anthony and I are going to watch the Oscars. We're going to uh, watch and record Anthony drinking something horrible <laughs> that I create for him. Uh, uh, it's, it's, I don't know. I, you know what? It could go either way with this. It could go either way. Really. There's, there's, uh, I mean, we split the ticket on a bunch of these, but we're actually, you know, I'd say almost a third of these were kind of voting the same. Yeah. You know, but and uh, we didn't we didn't discuss this prior. No, we didn't discuss yeah. this prior. We just sort of uh, get a printout and let's and let's let's, you know, let's let's do our Oscar picks. But um, how listen- long do you think the in memorium is going to be? Oh, wow. I don't know. Should that be a tiebreaker? Because our tiebreaker question, be tiebreaker. our tiebreaker question, how long will the in memoriam yeah. be? Oh, it should be. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say it's going to be three minute, three minute in memoriam. What do you say? I'm going with six minutes. A lot of people died. Oh, really? Yeah. A lot of people. Six minutes is okay. I'm going three minutes. You're going six minutes. All right. That's another tiebreaker question. I don't think we're going to have to go to the tiebreaker. I actually think it's going to be. You're going to win. It's going to. I don't know that I'm going to win. I mean, you know, I don't know that I'm going to win. But um, but look, um, listen to us on on Oscar night. You'll be able to download the podcast because we're going to record it directly after the show. It'll be probably a shorter uh, uh, episode of the Film Threat podcast. Yeah, and you know, probably we won't do any production on it. We'll just upload it as is. Yeah, think. we'll just sort of throw on the theme song and then and then that's it. 
Yeah. We're not going to we're not going to get fancy with it. No. Right? Uh, but but we will upload it that night. So you I can think listen. that's the quickest way to get it to people. The quickest way. We will give the statistics of uh, how well we did. We'll discuss the categories. We'll discuss what happened at the Oscars. It'll be the Film Threat Oscar Post Show. Play the music. Sponsored by. Yeah, exactly. What's the. Yeah. Spo- sponsored by the Film Threat Oscar Post Show. Sponsored by. I'm drinking. It's sponsored, sponsored by some cheap, cheap beer, probably PBR, <laughs> that I'm going to be drinking. The Film Threat Oscar Post Show. Anthony Ray Bench and Chris Gore join them on Oscars Night with a host of the a, a, a bevy of friends in a loud party room, where we'll be discussing the Oscars. All right, so. Uh, all right, yeah. Listen, it's listen, be a lot of fun. listen to us, Oscar Night. Uh, thanks again for listening. And as we like to end every podcast with, let's get out of here. here!